No matter what some biomechanics guru tries to tell you, know that old school T-ball rows are here to stay. And there's a reason why legends like Ronnie Coleman and Arnold Schwarzenegger lived on them. It's not due to a lack of equipment, it's because the exercise works plain and simple. If you want to thicken your entire back from top to bottom, the basics work. So let me explain the benefits and provide some serious variations and pro tips. So why do we do T-bar rows over regular barbell rows? See, the landmine provides a circular strength curve. As you row through a full range of motion, that bar is getting closer to the center of mass, never reaching 100% vertical status, but somewhere in the middle. And what that does is makes the exercise easier in the end range, hardest in the bottom, thereby maximizing the way to stretch. It's a lengthened motion. So we're doing this not necessarily to get the best squeeze on the back, even though that is possible, but to stretch out everything. And if you even round your spine, your spinal rectors will get further stimulus. And that's also why the V-bar is not bad in this context. If we know we're emphasizing the length of position, then you coming inwards, getting that crazy stretch, and then pulling where going past that point is not more lats, is fine. So the neutral grip gives you a good enough contraction, and even if it theoretically doesn't, it still wouldn't matter because we are prioritizing the most productive lengthened range. So even if you just did lengthened partials in the bottom, that in itself would be a great mass builder for the back. And that's also why cheat rows were so popular on this exercise. It's about the stretch first and foremost. But that said, I do want to point out that using smaller plates, typically having a bunch of 10 stacked up at the start and then you pile on 25s, is way better for T-bar rows. Trust me, I used to do seven plates for reps. Now, it's a struggle to get between three and five plates. That's what it means to get more out of less weight. And when you're always overloading, the stimulus to fatigue ratio isn't favorable. Not for purely building mass, but the recovery side of things. Your spinal rectus will be worked almost too much since you're hinging a lot of the movement, and your upper back is in a constant state of soreness. So we don't want peak muscle damage, which takes away from overall back recovery. Like this will affect your squats, deadlifts, volume, and frequency. And you can get the same results for the actual rowing muscles if you use one third of the weight. The increased arm bend makes a massive difference. You can go from a quarter bend to halfway, sometimes even beyond. And that also intensifies the way to stretch on the way down. So even though you're not overloading, you can't go as heavy. The fact is, you're dropping away from here to here instead of just there. Kind of comparing snatch grip high poles to power shrugs. In terms of building the yoke, it's rather one to one. Yet with the power shrug, you'll do 500 pounds. The snatch grip, maybe 200 something, max 300. So the lowering phase of the way to stretch is underrated. And when you have that control in there, your entire back will be lit. Also know that a lot of the old school guys used to stand on mats or little steps to further intensify the stretch in the box. So even if they were using 45 pound plates, it was never some pen lay row type of action where the motion was dead stop. The torso was always bent forward. And that's one of the biggest mistakes I see. Guys are doing the T-bar rows completely upright or they'll go from horizontal to rather vertical doing this heaving motion. Keep it in between 45 to 30 degrees, but the lower the better. Like It should be that the plates are skinning the ground at the bottom very close, arms fully locked, even rounding the spine. And then when you roll, you're maintaining that exact position. When done right, this will put meat on anyone's back. And also regarding this whole spinal rector talk, when you're using the form I'm showing you, controlled, full range of motion, squeezing, using a weight that's reasonable, your spinal rectors aren't going to give out. They're just going to be stimulated to an extent that is positively hypertrophic, not hurting your recovery, not feeling beat up for the rest of the session. You're fine. You can squat a day later. So you're only correcting a weak link and your ability to brace does not compromise movement in any kind of way. If it is, your ego lifting. That is the honest truth. Also, 
If you do T-bar rows at the end of your workout, this literally becomes a non-issue, not even the smallest speck of being a problem for your lower back. I don't care if you're a novice, super weak, maybe you neglected your hip hinges for years, you suck at Dallas, doesn't matter. If you did a complete back workout, chest support of rows, weighted pull-ups, cables, whatever you can think of. You did a bunch of motions earlier on and then you end with the T-bar rows. The only thing you're gonna feel is your upper back. That's a limiting factor and explains why chest support is not necessary. Now I'm not saying to not do chest support. If it's your first exercise, definitely do it in that way. But if you're finishing with T-bar rows, it really doesn't make a difference if it's chest supported or not. And that's actually how Joe Bennett, the hypertrophy coach, deals with his elite pro bodybuilding clients, including Terrence Ruffin. If what I'm saying is not too good for Terrence, then it's not too good for you or me either. Just saying. And for home gym guys, this is a true blessing because all you need now is a landmine station. In my case, actually stick it in the weight tree barbell holder, which maximizes stability. That thing ain't going anywhere. Lastly, if you want a nice dumbbell rowing alternative, definitely consider one arm T-bar rows. First of all, all, the benefit is you don't have to load up as many plates. So if you go to a gym where you don't want to hog all the 10 pounders or there's not enough 25s, great. Single arm, you're going to drop the load by half. So just off that, it's going to be super fast set up. And it's also great if your dumbbells aren't that heavy. Maybe they max out 100 pounds and you're capable of so much more, especially with straps. With a T-bar, you'll be able to go well beyond that. And I'd argue the stretch is even better. So this is not a metals row. That's more so flared out using the sleeves of the bar. Also legendary for building the rhomboids and traps. But the way I'm showing is just going to be an overall mass builder, mostly for lats, because you're going to have a neutral grip. But you can also make it more rear delt by being slightly flared and doing a diverging kind of motion. So you're not standing on the outside of the sleeves. You're either going to be inside, just like a regular T-bar row, staggered stance for a maximum powerful position, one hand on the knee, or you can be outside, which is really gonna stretch you out and line you up nicely for the lats while grabbing onto something sideways for additional support. It could be a bench, power rack, whatever you have available. Those are the two variations I recommend. And you can also attach D handles or rotating grips like this directly onto the bar. This way you can get a rotational effect. Plus it changes the movement a bit. You're kind of lengthening further out in front of you. Regardless of preference, unilateral rowing is always a good idea as many of us have legit back imbalances. Just to say my left lat is noticeably wider than my right. So an exercise like this can do wonders in correcting that. And the fact that we don't have these bulky dumbbells obstructing range of motion is a nice benefit. So T-bar rows are whatever you make them out to be. Anyway, there's so much to love about T-bar rows and I can go on. So if you want a part two, let me know. But in the meantime, reintroduce these variations and I'm certain they'll be a part of your long-term programming. Enjoy the results, lats, upper back, way to stretch in the traps. Can't go wrong. Get big, just like the old school greats did.